Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. Just want to do a quick video here. I've got this bumper scan that I'm repairing for the 325i or CI and um, I, I've basically been reattaching this plastic piece to the actual bumper skin itself because it got ripped off. And the way I've been doing that is I've been using one of these Portisol like handheld um, welding things and it actually comes with this like knife edge tip and I've been using that to uh to actually melt the plastic and do like a you know a plastic weld because that's how it was originally done so these things are really great they're uh, butane operated uh just turn the gas on get it going i had it heated up really nicely um, just a minute ago and you know it's been working so i kind of just wanted to demonstrate the process um, this is a new purchase for me it costs about 80 bucks um, you know it's called portisol it's just a little butane powered soldering iron thing and you know it's really great they make a smaller one i think weller actually makes a smaller one for about 50 bucks this one was um, 80 dollars. this is the 125 watt version and the smaller one is sort of like a uh, like a 60 watt version i believe something like that um, I, so I don't know if that one will work for doing this. I assume so because butane, you know, it's going to get it hot anyway. So all I've been doing is just touching it down in there and it's been melting the plastic. Hold on. It's not quite hot enough yet. So let's give it a couple seconds. This thing actually heats up pretty quickly. And I suppose the smoke there is my, my clue. Yeah. See that? And it just goes ahead and it melts the plastic. And that's how this thing gets welded on. And I've actually been taking to melting this part of the plastic as well, because I don't have um, as much of the original plastic on this part of the bumper skin sticking up as when this thing was brand new. So what I've done, what I did basically to make this work is I used a little X-Acto knife, which I don't know where I put it right now, but I used a little X-Acto knife to kind of cut off the little prongs such that this would fit back down over it. You know, there was just some, some of this plastic material was still on those little prongs right there. So I just kind of sliced them down this way until they were thin enough that they would fit. And now I'm just melting this down like this. That's working pretty well, man. And so I'm just making sure that I, I melt into both pieces of plastic. That way I just kind of get a good, good bond, you know? Might not be uh, factory original, but you know what? It's the same thing. It's gonna work. Seems to have worked for these pieces here. So, you know, really cool, man. That's actually gonna work. I'm missing this one over here on this edge and the same one over on the other edge, but that's probably not gonna matter. Um, I do have, I do have a new piece right here for this one. And, you know, I really like this, uh, this larger one, the 125 watt one, because it comes with a little built-in stand. The cheaper one had, a, had the stand separate. You would have to sort of balance them. That was the main reason why I went with this one over the cheaper one. Unfortunately, I'm missing this in there, which I'm really kind of bummed about. I'm wondering if... Um, I'm wondering what I want to do about that. If there's really anything I can do, I don't know that there is. So why don't I just try to melt that one first and maybe we can sort of melt the edges down into, into it right there. Maybe that'll end up being a good repair. I mean, as long as it sticks, you know, that's kind of all I care about. And here I'm gonna to have to be careful. I don't want to burn through to the other edge and, and mess up the paint or anything. So I'm just kind of getting some molten plastic in there, some molten polypropylene. I have a previous video where I tried to repair something like this on my bumper using epoxy, but I realize now that's not the way to go. You definitely want to do something like this and do some plastic welding, which is what they did at the factory. So yeah, I'm, I'm much happier with this. It's pretty awesome, man. I honestly, I did not think this was gonna work. I didn't know anything about plastic welding. I thought maybe you had to have a special like soldering iron for that, you know, that, that, that heated it up to uh, 
something a little hotter. I don't know. I guess that was kind of uh, kind of silly because, of course, you know, if it's soldering iron gets hot enough to melt tin or something, then it's got to be hot enough to melt plastic, right? So here I'm just going to hold that in because it looks like it wants to pop up a little. So I'm going to hold that in until it dries, until it cools. And we'll turn this thing off. Set it down so I don't have to touch it. And that's awesome, man. Look at that. Nice repair right there. So I'll just wait until this thing cools. And then we will uh, continue on. So over here on this side, I'm going to clean these up a little bit just to make sure that they're going to fit in. I think they're already pretty clean. I might have cleaned them up before. See this one right here, I'm going to cut that one a little just to make sure that'll fit in. And then the piece, which I don't know if you can tell, came from a green bumper. You got a little overspray right here. Uh, that came from a bumper in a junkyard. I'm going to clean that one up as well because you can see that's got some residue in its slot. Pulled this off of a bumper that was a different style bumper than this one. I mean, it was still from a CI, but it was the older one that looked different. And if at all possible, when I find, if I find this bumper in the junkyard, I want to find one that is this exact style and black already. That way I don't have to pay the extra to paint it. And again, I, it, it's really, really difficult to find a CI bumper or CI at all in a junkyard. They're just fewer and far between. I guess they, not as many of them were sold, which hopefully makes them more desirable and hopes, hopefully makes this car more desirable when I go to sell it. And it looks to me like these two edges are the ones that have the tension, I guess. So I'll have to hold one of those corners when I let it cool down. So I'm just trying to get, make sure I get enough plastic, you know? And I wanna make sure that cools first before I torque on it. I was just sort of pushing it down here in the corner, pushing this one down in the corner. And do this one inside here. Okay, I think I got that. I'm just trying to get a little extra on these things because these are just easier to rip out because this piece is so large, I guess. So I think I want to let this cool the way it is before I put some torque on this one because I got to bend this one down just because the bumper is, you know, a little tweaked after all this time. So I'm going to make sure these cool down completely before I even try to do that. Okay, here's some uh, close up action. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool down while I'm pressing it down. That way it doesn't pop up. Okay, it's dry and it dried down in place. So all good. Now I wanted you guys to see what's involved with attaching this section back to the bumper. So it uses these plastic rivets to attach things. This is normally, there's normally a longer tip right here and it looks like a standard rivet when you put it in. You know, this part is not compressed like that and it's, it's kind of elongated so that you can shove it down in the hole and then when you pull the center section out, that this center section is actually usually pressed all the way in like that. See, and it's, this is what it looks like when it's in place. And that's how it's, you know, in its completed rivet form. We've, we're focused on that. So that's what it looks like. It's holding things in like that. So what you have to do to get these off if, is you have to put a little punch down here and just knock the little center section through. There are eight of them. You got to get them all out before you can take this piece off. So I don't have new rivets yet. I'm going to order them now. 
Um, you just would put them in with a standard rivet gun, you know, that you kind of get at Harbor Freight. You just kind of pop them in, squeeze them down, and you're done. So uh, given the fact that I have to order those, they aren't going to show up. I'm, I'm not going to wait. I'll just, you know, kind of end the video here. By the way, I've augmented my Portisol carrying case with a little loop of solder and some shrink wraps or some heat shrink tubing, little sections of it, and a little plastic bag here. I got like a whole bunch of these on eBay from China for like nothing. And the normal tip that you wanna use in here is gonna be just the regular, let me put this away first, just this regular tip. This is how you change them out. That goes like that, that goes like that. So you just kind of screw that on. So this is like the normal soldering tip that you would normally use for just doing wires and stuff. And this is really super handy to have. Um, you know, that way there's just, there's no wires. You're not dealing with any electrical wires as you need to resolder stuff. And I definitely need this right now for this, the 325 CI because um, there, there's more wiring that I have to repair. Like the, the some, whoever did the stereo install, like cut all the wiring harnesses on the backs of the speakers and stuff. So I'm gonna have to fix that. And uh, I'll probably do a video about that. And I'm, I also wanna get, um, I think I did already buy a little, it's like a little helping hands thing that's, that's like got a magnetic base because I saw Eric O using one of those and I'm like, genius, gotta have that. So I'm, hopefully I'll be able to store that in this kit as well. Anyway, um, great tool. I recommend this highly, it's really awesome. So I don't have those rivets yet. It's about, you need eight of them and they're about uh, 10 bucks on eBay. Um, it's probably a little bit more at the dealership. Uh, you know, this bumper, as you can see, is not perfect. You know, we got a little scratches, a bit of scratches down here and here, which means that um, this is probably just a temporary fix. You know, I don't mind spending $10 for a temporary fix for right now. Um, again, temporary fix. I'm gonna find a better looking bumper in the junkyard. It might take a little while, but you know, we're in no particular hurry to sell this car. As you can see, there's a split right here, which is gonna be visible. So yeah, it's not perfect, but it's gonna be good enough for now. I, it's, it'll be nice to get a bumper on the car so we can kind of look normal driving the thing around. Um, you know, I'll be looking out for a better bumper in the junkyard in the future, but until then, we're gonna run with this one. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, please toss me a subscribe. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.